Welcome to our YouTube channel, Moneyline with Nancy TV. This is where you get the latest updates on business, finance, economy, market, as well as investment information. If you couldn't follow us live on television, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, press the notification bell so that you can get notifications. Thank you. Enjoy this video. All right, welcome back to the program. My guests are joining me right now. Special guest is that. Uh, first, I will uh, start by introducing His Excellency Peter Ryan. He's the ambassador of Ireland to Nigeria, ECOWAS Ghana, and Guy Free Coast, you know, Togo, Benin. He's here with me again. Good morning, sir, and welcome Good to morning, the program. Good morning, Nancy. Thank you for the opportunity to join you. Thank you very much. And uh, joining us is Dr. Robert Floyd. He's the head of International Affairs for Technological University at Dublin. Dr. Floyd, good to see you. Thank you very much, Welcome Nancy. to Nigeria. It's very nice to uh, actually meet you in person and actually to come here to Nigeria. Yeah. And if I can say, um, based on the last time we did the online interview, you've made me a minor celebrity in <laughs> Ireland with the Nigerian community. <laughs> that's so nice to hear, because the last time, I think that was like 10 months ago or 11 yes, months ago, correct, yeah. that I did the last uh, interview. So you're now like a celebrity in the... Yes. <laughs> Fantastic. No, I, I guess which I should just naturally start with uh, uh, the, the ambassador. You've been here now for about two years? Yes, yeah, almost yes, two years. Almost two years. Mm -hmm. The last time you, you, you came, you, you talked about that you're going to, uh, that uh, Ireland's engagement with Nigeria mm -hmm. is on democracy, diaspora, and development. Can you mm -hmm. just speak to me like in a minute what mm -hmm. has been done around those three three uh, uh, pillars? The last time you spoke to me, you said that. Last mm. interview, yeah. yeah, thank you for that and thanks for the opportunity to come back. It's good to be here with the bright lights. Um, we're, look, we're, we're, we're very pleased with the progress that we've made. Um, I, should, I should have added, of course, in, on the development heading that we're almost, we've almost completed our new embassy in Abuja, which we look forward to welcoming you for. And um, uh, for the biggest St. Patrick's uh, celebration, I think, that uh, Nigeria will, will have ever seen. And uh, we, we, are, we are building a new embassy on the European Union compound here in Abuja. And that will be ready early in the new year, which we're very excited about. Uh, I think the, the, the business links uh, development that we've seen, I think, has proven, uh, has proven very successful. In the last year, we've had a fintech trade mission, agri-food trade mission, and a whole range of other visitors, including, of course, uh, Dr. Robert Flood from TUD. Uh, in terms of the democracy side, we have supported a whole range of NGOs around the country, including NGOs who focus very much on empowering women and ensuring uh, the participation of, of young women, particularly and young people, in, uh, in the democratic process, which I think is very important for us. And I think finally, I would say, on the cultural side, we have done an awful lot of uh, cultural outreach with our storytelling sessions, with our literature visitors, with our visual arts visitors, in fact, this week we had the director and deputy director of the Irish Museum of Modern Art, our National Museum of Modern Art, who spent a, a, an entire week in Lagos, uh, traveling around meeting young Nigerian artists and learning more about here. Mm. So we've made some progress. We have lots more to do, but we've made some progress. Dr. Flood, why are you in Nigeria this time? When, when did you come in? I arrived in Lagos on Sunday evening. We spent a few days in Lagos and we came here, uh, I think, yesterday or the day before. Um, really what it is, um, TU Dublin has had an engagement with Nigeria for an incredibly long time, actually. Um, and what I'm trying to do is get a better understanding of the landscape for higher education here and skills development in Nigeria to see can TU Dublin contribute to that in a sustainable way. Um, that's what my, my main interest is, and it's to get a detailed understanding of that rather than just going for the straightforward transactions of recruiting students to come and study in, in TU Dublin, to identify potential partnerships with our, or with universities here in Nigeria uh, that we can develop long-term sustainable collaborations. Is this your first time in Nigeria? It is indeed. Oh, welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you very much. What do you think? What was your first impression? It's fabulous, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I have to say I absolutely mm -hmm. love it, although the bulletproof car makes me a little bit nervous. <laughs> well, he's, he's very jealous of uh, somebody in my role who gets to be here all the time Yes. and to see all the, all the range of things happening in this dynamic country. Mm. So, so what have you learned in the last few days? Because it, it, it's very important, of course, you have over 25 years experience working in Europe, 
Asia, Africa, North America, Latin America, as well as Central uh, Asia. Um, you know, for, you've, you've served at the request of the Irish Minister of Education and Skills on the High Level Group on International Education. Now, you currently serve as a member of the Irish Universities Association International Directors Group. So, uh, you, you, you have enough experience around all of this. Since Sunday till now, what have you really learned? We've gone out to look to visit a number of, so first of all, say Technological University Dublin is quite unusual in that we do everything from vocational to bachelor's, master's and PhD. And you can actually progress through from a, an apprenticeship right through to a PhD if you want uh, in, a, in our system. So in Lagos, we're looking at a number of uh, vocational schools. And what's actually very, very interesting from talking to the people, they're seeing that the issues that they have are unique to them. And we were, I won't say laughing, but I, Peter was smiling when I was saying this uh, to him. I have seen these identical issues in about five or six other countries. So they're, they're far from unique. The solutions might be different because we have to localize the solutions uh, to, you know, to the correct cultural context, et cetera, uh, and the political context that they're in. Um, but the problems aren't unique. Actually, the problems, I would argue, are actually quite universal. Mm. Okay, I'll come back to you a bit. Um, Ambassador, I know that Nigeria-Irish relationship started as far back as independence or perhaps 1961, mm. if I'm not mistaken. The Irish embassy in Nigeria is the first on the African continent. But how will you quantify that relationship since the 1960s in terms of strength? Because if we have that number of years in terms of relationship, don't you think that we should have a stronger relationship in trade? I was looking at the trade numbers. Was it yesterday or earlier this morning? Not too so significant. I know I spoke to you the last time about it, that I wanted to see stronger trade relationship. What are you doing in terms of that? And I'll, okay, let me also ask you, since it's also related to that, we have a few Irish <coughs> companies here, the Guinnesses, the Jamesons, and all of that. I was... Um, reading an article some time ago talking about this, the number, the export of spirits yes. into mm. the country, into Nigeria has tripled. Mm. Mm. So Nigerians, we drink a lot, the mm. whiskeys, the mm. brandies, not the local mm. Ogogoro, you understand what I mean? I so, but mm. how much of this are we seeing back, considering that our relationship has come a very long way in the 60s? Yeah, I'm glad That's you about 60 I'm, something, yes. I'm glad you asked me that because next year will mark 75 years of Guinness in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And Guinness in Nigeria, as you know, they don't just produce an identical product to Ireland. It's become part of Nigeria. So the Nigerians say the best Guinness in the world comes from Nigeria. There's three breweries in this country. They use a lot of Nigerian products and inputs supporting Nigerian farmers. Even after they have used the products and used the barley and used the, used the grains, they redistribute that amongst farmers for use in their production in Nigeria. So it's a great Nigerian-Irish success story. It's available everywhere across this country. They're probably their biggest product is probably the malt Guinness, mm. which, as you know, is a Nigerian invention. So it's a sign of Nigerian innovation, some Irish... I suppose, investment at the beginning and some Irish belief in this country. And if you think that it's the second largest uh, producer in the world of black beer is here, what an incredible decision before Nigeria even got its independence by people in Ireland, in my city, who said, well, actually, we're going to go to Nigeria because we believe in Nigeria. And they've stayed in Nigeria. They continue to employ many people here. But the interesting piece for me is it brings a lot of, it's brought a lot of dynamism to the relationship. Uh, one, of the, one of the leading members of the team, the Nigerian team in Lagos, is actually working in Belfast at the moment, working in, in the Guinness uh, Brewery in Belfast. So this is a real two-way exercise. I would say the trade, there's still potential to grow the trade a little bit further. I'm delighted that the Nigerian... What would that potential be, Hannes? Because it's 60-something yeah. years, you know, yeah, I think of, it's a, of our relationship. It's a bit of a winding road, mm. okay? Because we're, we're in our case... We have quite a small economy, mm. but we have an open economy. Just two weeks ago, uh, Mrs. Dabiri, who heads the uh, Nigerian in the diaspora, mm. NITCOM, uh, she came to Dublin and she uh, opened and spoke at um, a, an investment summit 
organised by the Nigerian community in Ireland. So we're very lucky that we have a very active Nigerian community in Ireland who are trying to push forward on trade and investment. More than a month ago, we had a fintech um, a delegation from Ireland here with some of the solutions that we have for financial services. So on your phone at the moment, many of the pieces of software that are operating that phone are actually developed in Ireland and are being managed from Ireland. Some of those people are coming looking for Nigerian partners. One of the companies in particular was led by two young Nigerians who were born in Ireland, who came back from Ireland with some serious technology to provide solutions in this marketplace. So that's even more special for me than the trade statistics, because that demonstrates the next generation mm -hmm. is starting to bring their own innovation and their own style of doing it. Now that leads me to the education part of it, which mm -hmm. is also why Dr. Floyd uh, is, is, is here. How do you think we are able to tap or learn or perhaps you know, mutually benefit from each other because there's also a strong Nigerian diaspora mm. in, 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 in Ireland doing also fantastic things, I must say. Mm. And I know that the last time that we also spoke, uh, we know that the highest number of STEM graduates per capita in the EU are in Ireland. So how do you think with your visit here to strengthen that relationship? And the last time I mentioned that STEM education in Nigeria is gradually waning I'm, I'm hoping it will come up on board again that um, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, let alone women, a lot of mm -hmm. women don't even mm -hmm. want to, you, you know, go into the STEM education, the sciences, and all of that. So with your visit here, what concrete things should we expect? Um, I, just to maybe to speak on that piece about the STEM education, I think one of, one of the challenges globally is to get both men and oh, women, women. Uh, to study, in, increasingly study in STEM, where initiatives have been introduced by the Irish government is not actually at the third level, it's going back to the primary and the secondary level of education, because that's where you get kids excited about it, you get them interested in, and that's actually where there's a, uh, I think there's a body to work. I haven't looked closely at the secondary level here, um, but I think that's where a body of work actually needs to be done is to get students, both male and female, excited and enthused about, about actually doing that. A critical part of that is actually having really well qualified teachers. Uh, and we had a lengthy discussion yesterday with the National University Commission about that. And we're, I was explaining the model we use for uh, the education, in, in our case of university lectures. We look at sharing that with the NUC and it's not to say this is the best way to do it, this is just to say this is the model we use, but you, you need to adapt that and localize it uh, for the community here in Nigeria because what works in Dublin may not work in Abuja or Lagos. You need to take in a, the, the whole cultural context to that. Having been in the university system for a very long time, what, what do you think make universities succeed? It's the quality of the teaching. Mm, quality for, of for teachers? The quality of the teaching because you need children or students to come in excited to learn and you need them to leave still excited <laughs> to learn even more. And you've got to give them the skills that they will be, their, their method of inquiry never changes and that they want to constantly learn. And again, I come back to that's a model that we've adopted a long time ago in TU Dublin whereby all our academics have to have a formal qual qualification in third level teaching and learning. That's how they, you get a really good curriculum. That's how you reinvent the curriculum all the time. You keep the teachers excited and you keep the students excited. Mm. How does artificial intelligence, you know, come into all of this? Because Technology University of, of Dublin, how does in artificial intelligence, I can be here on my phone mm. and just command a few things to be done. Yeah. Uh, you know, you can actually even have a robot of me. Uh, mm. You know, some jobs will be extinct perhaps in the next 5, 10, 15, yeah. 20, 20 years. So how does artificial intelligence really come into technological education as well as uh, reskilling? We talked about teachers earlier. How do we reskill teachers to be able to get that done? And do, do you see AI being a challenge in terms of teaching? I've heard um, 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 you know, uh, a lot of experts say, OK, AI is an enabler. Mm. 
it's what do you think really um i think it's going to what to what extent it will actually take over the role i'm not sure but i actually do think there it will always be a need for the human intervention as as you rightly said you know you could create a hu uh, an ai version of me if you were sick enough to do that mm -hmm. um but um there's always, I, j I just think there, there's, there's an innate part of humanity that we actually crave and will need the ongoing human interaction in that. I think it can enable it. It does pre currently presents huge challenges, particularly for plagiarism um, with uh, students. And students think they're being really, really smart and clever mm. by getting an AI bot to generate mm. uh, an assessment. Mm. That just gets them over one hurdle when they're actually out in the workforce if they can't mm. answer the question on their own mm. they're useless mm. uh, and i think that's part of our education with uh, mm. students on on the role of ai yes use it as an enabler but don't use it as the backbone of what you're going to do well, in dublin are you seeing it change perhaps when you give your students assignments they use ai yes to absolutely. do it how do you detect that there are certain um there is certain software yeah. you can use to, to, detect. to detect it. But um, I heard of a very recent case mm. where a student was given a project in very, very specific parameters. And the references shouldn't be more than 10 years old. It was a medical subject. And the young lady got up to present. And she had superb references going back many, many years. Uh, she gave her presentation and the lecturer just said, zero percent you used ai and she did use the she ai did, she used mm -hmm. ai because she wanted to go on holidays for the weekend instead mm -hmm. of doing her work there are consequences of unit using it and somebody who's well experienced in running assessments will see it straight away mm. but there's big opportunities around it. there are opportunities for sure so yeah. a, a lot of the technology firms as you know that are in ireland and are very successful in ireland are, are also locating their ai research teams in ireland so just last week, Microsoft announced 500 new jobs in Dublin for people working specifically on AI development. So we think there's opportunities there as well, mm -hmm. but we need to be careful about the impact. We need a balanced the impact. Because yeah. mm. we always say, you know, there's three, there's three reasons why Ireland has done as well as it has in, in the technology and economic space at the moment. And we always say it's education, education, education. That's, at the, that's the basic platform. Yeah on which everything else has been built. Mm. Mm. Okay, there were uh, two government mm. ministers mm. that came last yes, year, if yeah. I'm not mistaken, yeah. a minister of agriculture, a minister of diaspora. Yes, that's right, yeah, we had two yeah. ministers in yes. 12 months. Yeah. Yes, uh, what exactly has come out from those visits? Yeah, look, we're, we're, we're particularly pleased to have had the minister of agriculture come mm -hmm. and the minister of diaspora, who's also the minister of our international Inter development. development. So I suppose out of the Minister of National Develop International Development and the Diaspora, uh, one of the things that came was he launched a major um, biogas uh, project uh, with, the, with the United Nations Women Group here to, to support hundreds of thousands of women across the country uh, and to, to really make a difference in climate adaptation measures, which I think is very important. As regards for the, the Minister of Agriculture, we, we have started to build research collaboration in the agricultural space. We've also supported, I suppose, more exchange in the policy area between both sides. So we're really pleased with those two visits. We hope that we get a, some further visits and perhaps for the opening of the new embassy, it's usually a good, a good occasion uh, to, to welcome somebody else. I think one of the things, you know, we don't wait until visits happen to do things. We're trying to do things all of the time. So we're delighted also um, to welcome some groups from uh, Nigeria over the course of that time and uh, yesterday we were particularly delighted to be supported by the chairman of the Nigeria Ireland um, parliamentary friendship group uh, chairman Paul Namchi who helped us meet with the TET fund he helped us with meet with the National Universities Commission and is really invested in the relationship so that that's really important yeah. to us that it's not just the embassies doing it that it's also the private sector and other parts of the public sector. So we're very excited about the momentum that we have at the moment. And it's more homework for me, but that's okay. Uh, because when you see progress, mm -hmm. it's very rewarding. 
So around Dr. Flood's visit is a real example of progress. Mm. Dr. Flood, what, what, what are your KPIs as you visit Nigeria? First time, I, I, I do know that part of your responsibility is promotion of the university, mm. globally, international recruitment. Yeah. So are you here to get Nigerians to come to the university in Dublin, more capital flight for us? No, and I, you know? I, we've had very lengthy conversations about that. Um, and I think that has been the main model of international education for probably the last 20 to 30 years um, it's n it's no different from it's effectively like an extractive industry we're extracting some of the brightest people to take them out of their home country and they probably rarely will actually go back what I'm trying to do is understand the landscape better here to try and develop as I said sustainable partnerships that there will always be a demand for students to travel abroad. There's no, mm. I, I've no doubt about that. That shouldn't be the totality of our activity here. I, I want to try and develop collaborations and relationships with universities that are still in place long after I'm finished. And that will make, that, that's for a sustainable relationship. The, I do believe long-term moving students around the world is not actually a sustainable solution mm. um, for, for either economies actually. What, what do you think will be the quick wins, uh, quickly? Uh, because education is very key. Mm -hmm. uh, it's even better, perhaps, to even catch them young. In Nigeria, we have millions of children out of school. Yeah. Um, secondary education, even tertiary education now is becoming a bit uh, more uh, challenging uh, because of the economic uh, situation. Mm -hmm. uh, will that hamper, perhaps, part of why uh, you are here? I, I, and what could be the quick wins around you know, technology, because education is one thing, technology education mm -hmm. is another. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not a duly concerned, like I'd, I'd be very cognizant of the fact that there are economic challenges, but there's actually a huge, like we had a lengthy meeting yesterday with the European Commission office here, mm -hmm. and they actually are providing, I can't remember the exact amount, mm -hmm. but very, very significant funding for uh, collaborations between Europe and Nigerian universities. Are there opportunities for grants, for example? There are huge, Scholarships? Huge opportunities for both, so to promote mobility, uh, short-term mobility of staff and students between the two countries, mm -hmm. or between Europe and, and Nigeria, for research collaborations. There's huge potential there, and it's probably a relatively untapped resource, um, certainly from Irish universities to date, and I'd look, that, that's one of the quick wins I'm, I would like out of this is actually to see what we can do that we can start embedding ourselves more here in Nigeria with uh, Nigerian partners, not actually purely about bringing students abroad. How about opportunities for training, Ambassador? They're huge, huge. Yeah. I mean, we visited two training institutes in uh, Lagos. We visited the, the Wavecrest Hospitality uh, School and we visited Ituwa and in Ituwa, the Irish government, for example, will be training uh, a group of young women starting early next year on a year-long training program about to work on solar and solar engineering. Okay. So that's a very practical. We want to use that as a demonstration. Of course, we'd like to scale it and have a lot more people doing it. But I think it's a very practical demonstration. In the case of Wavecrest Hospitality, included, believe it or not, as part of the Technological mm. University, is Ireland's oldest hospitality training facility mm. and the top one in the country. So Dr. Flood has very kindly agreed for curriculum sharing to connect teachers with one another, to connect students with one another and to see what best practice we can learn because he's also, what he didn't tell you is, he's also home to the largest group of Nigerian students and Nigerian diaspora in the whole country are in his college. Wow. Yep. So every day when he walks around the place they say to him, we saw you well, on Money <laughs> Line with Nancy. <laughs> so that's, so, what, that's why I feel yeah. at home here. Yes. <laughs> okay, so just as we close, uh, Ambassador, you told me the last time you brought me a gift, and thank you again, you're bringing me a gift. The gift mm. you brought me was Kilishi. And you told mm. me it's your favorite food. Now you have been here for close to yeah. two years. What's your favorite food now? My Don't tell me it's called Kilishi. Well, you know, I'm, I'm a jollof rice guy because okay. everywhere I cover, I'm, as you mentioned, across, across all the countries I cover, and I'll present my credentials in the Benin Republic next Wednesday. Mm -hmm. But everywhere I go, I join in the dispute over the best jollof, jollof rice. Of course mm -hmm. I do. And I've even joined Robert into the same thing. And our answer is always, 
wherever we're having it. That's the best. It's the best. It. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very diplomatic way of answering my question. I understand that. Dr. Floyd, are you telling me he has co-opted you so it's jello fries? Because absolutely. you've just been here for a few days. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Not too spicy? Has. No, no. Twice. Not too spicy. Okay. All right. Thank you very much for the gifts. Ambassador, this it's, is so nice. Thank it's you. It's something very small. It's a handcrafted. It's cra ha crafted by hand, mm. you'll see. Um, it's the perfect colour because I remember you had beautiful green on for our St. Patrick's St. Day St. Patrick's event. Day. And that's, that my, my wife Teresa brought that for you all oh, the way from thank Ireland. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank no, you very you're very much, welcome. Thank, thank you very you. much, Mum. I, I appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. So thank you both for coming thank on you. today's edition of the programme. Perhaps we'll do this again to be able to evaluate Perhaps next year, and let's see how it goes. I've been speaking with His Excellency Peter Ryan. He's the ambassador of Ireland to Nigeria and Echoes, as well as Dr. Robert Floyd. His first time in Nigeria, so help me say welcome. Give him a Nigerian welcome. He's a head of international affairs for Technological University Dublin. That's the much you can take on today's edition of the program. Thank you all for uh, joining us. Do have a fantastic weekend. Be the best you can be. Be the change you want to see. I am Nancy Naji. Bye now. Thank you for watching. In case this is your first time watching us, thank you. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, drop your comments as well as like, and most of all, share our content.